Good afternoon and welcome back to Gulfstream Park. I'm Gabby Gaudet, joined by Acacia Courtney here on this lovely Sunday afternoon and uh, second day of opening, of, uh, it was the following day of opening day, claiming crown day yesterday. We had a lot of excitement, uh, big handle, big crowd. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have asked for a better day either weather-wise. Weather-wise was absolutely beautiful and we had some really thrilling performances too and I, I just think it was so successful when we talked about this a bit yesterday and all throughout the day um, that how great it is that we we do have a day to highlight those claiming horses and those trainers and those owners and connections that really are the backbone of the sport. So it was wonderful being able to celebrate that, a perfect way to kick off the championship meet. And it's kind of funny because you have horses on claiming crown day who have recently kind of faced graded stakes mm -hmm. company, stakes company, and then you have the lower level open, you know, 6250 mm -hmm. claimers, but every one of them just gave us fantastic performances. We'll show you the, we'll highlight the three best performances on yesterday afternoon and we We'll start things off with Marabe and her victory in yesterday's tiara. And this was Marabe. She actually worked out a phenomenal trip. They went pretty slowly in front. You can see 25 and change, 51 and change for the half. And she just kept on grinding out a run to the outside. Great ride by Jose Lascano. Marabe won the win in your end day on uh win in your end day at Laurel, mm -hmm. and then once again getting the victory yesterday. Well, she really performed admirably there. I, I admit that I was a little bit hesitant with her taking that next step forward, and you pointed out that she did have some good back class. I know a special win for your family as well, and congratulations to trainer Lacey Gaudet. One of the other exciting performances yesterday was in arguably the feature race, the $200,000 jewel, won by Royal Posse, who actually repeated. He was the defending champ in there. He's the number three in yesterday, and, and he was a little bit further back off of the pace, and he just kept kept on running so very game and we were wondering how he might be able to get beat. He he performed so well ahead of Diamond Bachelor who switched over from the turf to the mm -hmm. dirt in that race too. There are a couple of scary moments there I thought on the back stretch <laughs> because it looked like Royal Posse was just not moving forward whatsoever under mm -hmm. a really really a hard ride on the back stretch but once again his true class did shine yesterday and I believe he got a hundred buyer speed figure for yesterday's victory so back to back years there in uh, the jewel. Hopefully we see him back here next year as well for <laughs> Rudy Rodriguez and Michael Dubb. And we wrapped things up on the card yesterday with the em Emerald and we saw Keystone for victory get the victory for winning owner Ken and Sarah Ramsey and of course Mike Maker giving both trainer and owner 15 wins on Claiming Crown Day. They really have dominated the Claiming Crown Day, and uh, Jose Ortiz in the saddle for that win, who had three wins yesterday. He came off a big day at Aqueduct the day before, and he really, uh, you, you said he ships well, which I definitely agree with, had some really great rides yesterday. So uh, congratulations to all of those connections on Claiming Crown Day yesterday. He really, and Jose Ortiz, he just dominates really mm -hmm. everywhere he goes. He, he rides absolutely, he rode fantastic mm -hmm. at the Saratoga meet, Belmont Aqueduct, and then of course taking his uh, success with him here to down down to South Florida, and of course uh, speaking to the Ramses, we will potentially see Keystone for victory heading to the Barbados Gold Cup. I believe that takes place in early March. Yeah, they've so got their bathing suits packed already. Yeah, I think everything <laughs> packed, <laughs> Mr. Ramsey. So uh, that was a uh, pretty uh, a very very fun day. But now turning our attention to today's program, some great betting opportunities today, and we do have a great betting wagers as well. We start things off here in race one, the rolling super high five. We have a carryover of over $1,600 there in the super high five dollar bet. Race one also does kick off the 50 cent early pick five and uh, industry low takeout at 12%. The race, race one starts early pick five. It is a mandatory payout in the early pick five as we move right along. Race five kicks off the 20 cent rainbow six, just over 11,000 for that carryover. And of course, as we get to race six, the late pick five, that is a 50 cent base wager. Again, that low takeout and we do, uh, that does carry over to the next day if it is not hit. So plenty of betting opportunities today and it's a gorgeous day. A little bit on the cooler side too. We were mm -hmm. lucky with a nice weather yesterday and I think we're gonna get pretty lucky again today. I think we will. It's, it's got a little bit of a breeze here. Very comfortable if you're coming out to the track here for day number two of the championship meet. All right, let's get things started here with race one. We start it off at a mile and a 16th on the turf. Rail set at 72 feet. This does start the rolling super high five in the early pick five. And Acacia, I know you took a stab at the ticket. I did. I kept it 
affordable to start off the car today because I did single in the last leg. Uh, my single comes in race number five with the nine R War Eagle, and this is trying to keep it affordable. I would have liked to go deeper in, in this uh, in that race and take this as a guide again because I, I'm not uh, completely sold on him. I don't think he's an entire lock, but I do think in that field he's going to be the one most likely to move forward. My deepest race comes in the race number three with the maiden claimer that I think there are a couple horses that can really take their next step. And at the fourth race, I went too deep because I do have that heavy favorite or what's bound to be the heavy favorite homer, Matt. I'm trying to beat him with a bit of a price in Starship Explorer. So again, very affordable for $36. I like it. $36. Hopefully you take it down <laughs> and parlay it onto the pick six or the late pick five. We do uh, start things off here with a $16,000 non-winners, a two lifetime condition. And you can see early money right now, but the five breakaway opening up as your short favorite. Acacia, you and I uh, both try to go against this horse, mm -hmm. but I do think that this is one you have to use in the early pick five. It's one you have to use, especially off of those last two performances. What I don't like is he's 0 for 11th at this mile and a 16th distance. He, he was beaten just a length last time and beaten by a neck up at Arlington prior to that. Uh, he was moved over into the barn of Armando de la Cerda two starts back. So he's been in good form in those two races since. It just looks like he's having trouble taking that next step, getting that win mm -hmm. at this distance. He hasn't seen the winner's circle since December of 2015, so it's been about a year now. He, there, there are things to like. He's got Corey Lannery up too. Yeah, and I thought his last race was good. It looked like he was closing into the pace whereas and, and making up ground, whereas nobody else really was. And he gives pretty consistent performances, but he consistently loses as well. So I thought uh, worthy of going against you opt for the 7 Aug August Lily, mm -hmm. who does have a little bit of tactical speed. She does, and that's going to be my biggest thing in here. I think that she's going to be forwardly placed. They added the blinkers two starts back, and she broke her maiden by nine lengths. I think she stepped up to face $30,000 claimers, and it was a bit too tough for her last mm -hmm. time. She's dropping in class to this 16 non-winners of two level, which I think is where she's going to fit better. Uh, I like that she gets Luis Saez up too. She's stretching out a little bit to this mile and a 16th distance. I think after such an impressive maiden win with the first time blinkers, they maybe got a little bit too excited with her chances. Yeah, I, th I thought she was kind of auspiciously placed there uh, after her yeah. maiden win. And uh, like you said, just kind of uh, outclassed in there. So getting a little bit more um, of a, a better position here mm -hmm. today. And for that $16,000 tag, I opted for the eight Yes Mongolia. And uh, just looking at the conditions of the race, obviously 16,000 non-winners of two were going a mile and a 16th on the turf. This filly, she sprinted last time out on the main track. She sprinted in her start prior to that. But if you look at her races going two turns on the turf before, they're actually quite good. At Arlington, I know it was a, kind of a subpar performance, but that was against Allowance Company, and she was bumped mm -hmm. heavily coming out of the gate. So took away all of her natural speed. Prior to that, though, you look at her races in the spring of this year, they're very good, and those mm -hmm. were against Maiden Special Weight Company. Well, I totally agree with you, and I had her I had her on my Superfecta for all of those reasons. I was a little bit questionable of how she would transfer over, coming to South Florida, stretching out to this mile and 16th again. She's been all over the place in different distances, different surfaces, mm -hmm. different uh, states, and so we'll see if maybe this is where she wants to be with that class drop. And uh, another notable thing is that her last two races were with 10-pound apprentices, and she'll have Emmy Jaramillo in the saddle today. All right, that is race one. Once again, starts the rolling super high five and the early pick five. Acacia has a $36 ticket there. We get to the se second race on the card. Nine winners of two lifetime for 30,000. Six furlongs onto the main track. And the three awesome type in here for Dale Bennett, I thought was kind of an enticing horse. I think this is the one to be in this race. And uh, debuted at Tampa in April. Won nicely there against $16,000 maidens. Wasn't seen again uh, for a few months, came by about six months, actually came back the end of October at Keeneland, and I thought ran a very good second. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll go back and take a look at that replay at Keeneland. And um, overall, you know, I thought it was kind of weird because this horse raided from off the pace, mm -hmm. closed, and was very, I thought, won very impressively at Tampa in uh, April. Off of that layoff, unfortunately, drew way outside post vision, and you, and you can see Jim, James Graham just really asking her coming out of the gate, trying to get to that forward position because you kind of want to save ground going into the turn. And that's exactly what he did. I thought that was kind of the strategy in the race. And given this horse's layoff, um, given the fact that he went to the lead, maybe taken a bit out of his comfort zone and still really hung in gamely, um, just kind of fading to mm -hmm. second, 
thought it, it was a big performance off that layoff that he could build upon today. I thought it was too. And it, maybe just in the stretch, it looked like he, he might have been a little bit tired, a little bit like a, ra mm -hmm. a horse that hadn't raced in about six months. But I thought all, all in all, pretty game. And I do want to show a stat on trainer Dale Bennett in the past five years with horses second off the layoff in dirt sprints. 15 for 47, 32% in the win column, 68% of the time in the money, and nearly even ROI of 197. But I thought that those numbers were very solid. Absolutely, and not to mention the winner of that race, Deep in a Dream, mm -hmm. came back to win for 30000 at Churchill, I think getting a 75 fire speed figure for that victory, too. Uh, we both used the one wild good to the inside, and um, I, this horse I was kind of, I was on the fence about because he's got that awkward middle speed, and I think he's got to be used from the rail. I agree, and that's why I, I had him on, too, and he has shown speed in the past. Actually, when he broke his maiden in Special Weight Company, he did get out early, and uh, he was coming from the outside that day. He was drawn outside, I think, inside here, especially going the six furlongs. He's going to have to go right away. Um, I think... Tactically, speed is going to be his best bet. Yes, he's got to go, I think. And it, unfortunately, that might take him a bit out mm -hmm. of his comfort zone. Uh, the four Grand Nene, you know, this is a horse who took a very, very, very long time to finally break <laughs> his maiden. But <laughs> he was going against maiden special weight company. If you look at the company he was running against and kind of the figures and how they stack up to mm -hmm. the rest of the field, he fits in this field. And sometimes we see horses who go such a long time without breaking their maiden. They wheel right back around mm -hmm. and get the, their uh, victory against winners for the first time. They cer he certainly could. He's got to face winners for the first time, but he hasn't raced since July. He's had about five months on the shelf, and uh, he's also cutting back in distance. That's why I had him on but a, a little bit further down because mm -hmm. he broke his maiden at a mile after 12 starts, but now he's going to run the six furlongs first off the bench, and so there were some questions about him. I thought he's one you have to use, but I was a little bit more hesitant. Okay, we get to the third, a maiden 12,500 claiming event mile, flat mile, onto the main track, Acacia, and you go to the five, Katira, who does technically take a pretty big drop in <laughs> class there uh, from Maiden Special Weight, even Restricted Stakes Company last time on the dirt. Restricted Stakes Company, the last time that she ran on the dirt, she ran in the Florida, Florida Sire Stakes, my dear girl, I think maybe way over her head in that in that spot there. She did have a very good second in Special Weight Company at seven furlongs earlier on in her career. Uh, she's going to be now in Maiden Claiming. She tried Maiden Claiming 50 last time, but that was on the turf. And she still, I thought, ran okay in the stalking position. She gets the blinkers today. She's been all over the place, but I do have respect for the connections. Ronnie Warner, sometimes they these horses maybe just need a little bit of time to get going. Mm -hmm. And I think that might be the case with this filly because she really did show some good promise early on before she tried the Florida Sire Stakes. She did, and she was a hard one for me to like because I think she will be bet coming out of that mm -hmm. restricted stakes company. Um, it's not really a strong move for the barn going turf to mm -hmm. dirt, and plus, when you get these types of horses that kind of aggressively drop like this, I mean, we're talking restricted stakes company to 12-5 for trainers that don't necessarily do this all mm -hmm. the time. I thought that was kind of a dicey proposition, so I did go to the one synchronizing to the inside who has sprinted on the main track in the past two starts at three quarters, now gets the mile, and I think the best approach is to send. And mm -hmm. if you're looking at stats, the connections here, they do well with their maiden claimers on the dirt. They do, certainly. Francisco D'Angelo, the trainer, and I think the stretch out here and the post position, I agree with you that this one's going to be forwardly placed. And a horse that I did like that you didn't use is Tavrita, who's first off the claim. This is the number six, and I will admit this one has <laughs> maybe a slow learner, but I think she gets a very positive claim now. She's in the barn of Safi Joseph Jr., who does very well first off the claim, about 22%. Um, it, this one's been working nicely, too, since she moved over to his barn. And it, she's by Curlin. This one, if, if something's going to be a, a question here, it's definitely not the distance. I want to give a sire stat on Colonel Curlin. <laughs> Colonel, I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, Colonel Cur Tom. <laughs> Colonel, <laughs> one of those. Uh, in Curlin in the past five years with two-year-olds in dirt root races, a very very strong 20%. So this one finished a, a relatively respectable second given it was a runaway winner last time. I think now with the new connections and Luca Panici, who did have a couple of wins yesterday too, she should be in the right spot. Yeah, I gave this horse a long, hard look, I'll be honest, <laughs> because I thought it was a positive <clears throat> trainer change mm -hmm. here with Safi Joseph Jr. But uh, she's just been so bad and she's been yeah. running against really just mediocre company. So I think the connections will really have to improve her. If you mm -hmm. get value, if you get a decent 
price on her, yeah. by all means, I think you should use her. But if she is being fed off of the positive trainer change, I would ta be tapping the brakes. Mm -hmm. But a, a good stat there here in race three as we get to the fourth and on winners of two lifetime on the main track at six furlongs in for that claiming price of 62.50 here, Acacia. And you go to the five Homer Matt, and this is another George Navarro horse. And I, I tried full disclosure. I tried to beat yes. George Navarro yesterday. <laughs> Didn't work out no. uh, to my advantage very no. well, but we'll take a look <laughs> at this horse's victory and just to take a look at the stretch run. This horse was coming off of a pretty sizable layoff. Hadn't been seen sem sem since September of 2015 off of that year layoff. Won by open lengths at 40 cents of the dollar, <laughs> dropping from Maiden Special Weight Company. And he's got that early speed, too. I remember he was actually entered in a race over at Gulfstream Park West a couple of weeks ago, and he was certainly one that was going to be uh, heavily bet that day. They waited. They're running him here at Gulfstream Park. Instead, he's had a couple of very strong works at Gulfstream Park West. We talk about that deeper track there. To, so to see uh, four furlongs in 48 and two, that's very good. That means he's probably going to be showing some speed as well. I also tried to beat him. I mentioned that in my pick five. I had to put him on top for all of those reasons, but I did use a horse in second who I'm hoping to get a bit of a price on, and that's one for Steve Dwoskin with the four Starship Explorer. And uh, this one I know hasn't had a win this year, but just tried the dirt last time, and it was a sloppy track. He gets a fast track today. And that was my concern with him, is that that was his first time on a, on a main track mm -hmm. surface. And a lot of the time we see horses who take a liking to the turf really like sealed surfaces. So now that we have an open, fast track, will he perform as mm -hmm. good as he did on the sealed track? But, uh, you know, I think in these types of races, sometimes it's very hard to go against these George Navarro droppers, but he's not really handling this horse with any bit of confidence. You know, mm -hmm. he dropped him in for 16 off of that layoff, and now he drops him once again in for that low tag. So I think you have to protect yourself in this mm -hmm. leg of the sequence. I like the six Divine Deacon maybe as an alternative. Um, you know, I... This horse last time out, the winner really was no superstar. <laughs> this horse was kind of closing. I mean, you're talking about kind of French players. Um, it, but I kind of like horses who have been consistently competing at this level, mm -hmm. whereas you get a big class dropper in George Navarro's horse, and you also get a very big class dropper in the two aggressive driver. Well, aggressive drivers dropping in class, so it's interesting. You went to try and maybe get a price with one Steve Dwoskin. I went to the mm -hmm. other one. Before we talk about aggressive driver, I do want to give a trick a quick trainer jockey stat on Steve Dwoskin and Luca Panici because I think that sometimes these are the kind of stats that might get overlooked. Um, when these two team up in the last year, 11 for 66, 17 percent win, 55 percent of the time in the money and a very good ROI of 288. So sometimes that's just something to notice. You might get, again, that value that you're looking. And then now back to aggressive driver who <laughs> ran in stakes competition mm -hmm. last time, but that was in January. It's been about 11 months. It has. It's been a long time. And, and this is talking about dicey propositions. Yeah. This is definitely that. Because it's one thing if you get George Navarro and they're dropping in class. Yeah. Horses who are trainers who a lot of their horses just circulate. They're part of the claiming game. They, they do it. They've got owners who have the money to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, uh, you can figure moves like that with higher percentage barns. But for these connections, I think this is even more scary because it is a smaller outfit. They have more to lose with these types of drops. So um, I think that's where I kind of hedge more towards uh, the George Navarro class. I dropper. agree. That's, that might be the safer bet, if <laughs> not more of a lower price. Okay, that is races one through four. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll take a stab at the 20 cent Rainbow Six. We have a small carryover in that, and Acacia will give her thoughts on the late pick five. January 28th at Gulfstream Park, an icon takes flight. The world's richest thoroughbred horse race. 12 of the sport's finest horses. One race. $12 million on the line. Watch Wager Witness. Go to PegasusWorldCup.com for more.
Welcome back to Gulfstream Park. Gabby Gaudet joined by Acacia Courtney. Now starts the 20 cent Rainbow Six. And I do have a ticket trying to keep it affordable today and uh, actually finding one single. But if you have a bigger bankroll, bigger budget, I think <laughs> you should definitely use two horses in race nine. I did single on your dreams or mine, but Mr. Baker is also in there and he's going to be a tough horse to beat. So mm -hmm. if anything, maybe tack him on if the funds, um, if you do have the funds to do so. Uh, starting with three horses though, three by three by five by two, that single in race nine and capping it off with just three in today's finale. We'll go into this really nice maiden special weight, seven and a half furlongs on the turf, rail sitting at zero feet. And we start things off with a replay of the nine, our War Eagle last time out, seen at Gulfstream Park West, sprinting on the turf at five furlongs. And this horse did make a nice closing bit I thought kind of struggling a little bit down on the inside and looked a bit rank too but did close very well and I thought a race that he could definitely build upon now stretching out to a little bit more distance. Well I think that's going to be one of the keys too. I liked this performance. I've mentioned this before. He definitely did look maybe a little bit hard to handle early on but uh, I think his switch over to the turf helped him because his first two races on the dirt were solid but his turf one I think he'll be able to move forward and it's hard to close sometimes on the turf track uh, as well as the dirt track at Gulfstream Park West and he managed to close. I think he'll be a bit more forwardly placed today and I, I do like him in this spot quite a bit. I was actually surprised that he was so far back when he made his mm -hmm. turf debut because he was on the lead uh, sprinting on the dirt in his uh, prior two races. And so now from that outside post, I think he will have to be used and use that speed. I love a horse today, and that is the one Mr. Meister. So I'm going to try to go against that horse, even though I liked his uh, performance. I didn't show the replay because there was a, a, I think, a two or three horse spill in this mm -hmm. race. So we obviously don't want to show that. But if you can go back and watch this replay, mm -hmm. um, he, Mr. Meister, A, he got left coming out of the gate. He did not break well whatsoever. And he lost a little bit of ground going into the first turn. He looked like he was making a huge move right before the quarter pole. And unfortunately, that's where the spill happened. And he had to go about nine, ten wide to avoid the spill. So, uh, but prior to that, it looked like he was going to circle the entire field. And that was actually a very decent made in special weight. So I really, really like this horse off of that trip. I thought, I thought so, too. I really think he has every license to improve in here. Um, also, we've mentioned this before, Bill Mott, an exceptional trainer, not known for first-time starters. This one has a, belt, a, a race under his belt now, and he's cutting back in distance a bit to the seven and a half. Yeah, like I said, if he breaks a little bit sharper today, I mm -hmm. think he doesn't necessarily have to be that far back. So if you're thinking, oh, he might not be able to get up at seven and a half furlongs, maybe not the case. As we get to the sixth race on today's card, we're going two turns, so seven and a half furlongs on the turf. Uh, very nice made in special weight here, and we'll start things off with your top selection, a replay of the number four, Moon the sky. Oh, before we get to that, your pick five. <laughs> we'll do the pick five quickly. I know we're going to talk about Moonless Sky as well, but uh, I did go three deep in this opening leg. Moonless Sky uh, is going to be my top pick, as Gabby mentioned. I used the two favorites in the seventh race. I saw that you spread, and I certainly don't disagree with you there. Um, I li really like a horse at a bit of a price, and that's lottery ticket in the eighth race. Then three and two, again, $36 for me. Okay, nice cheap ticket. Uh, $36 for the early pick five and for the late pick five. Once again, that early Early pick five, mandatory payout. Late pick five does carry over if it is not hit. Th the four, Moonless Sky. Going back to this horse's replay uh, last time out at Gulfstream Park West, he did stretch out to two turns, the mile on the turf, going against Maiden Special Weight Company. And Acacia, I, the reason why I didn't like this race mm -hmm. is because I thought it was just okay. Honestly, I thought he got second kind of by default because another horse in front of him was fading. Oh, I agree with you. I, I think I would have liked to see more from him. What I do like is that he was able to come off of about a three-month layoff, run a respectable second in that race. He's beaten about a length and a half. Yes, he... he was able to uh, benefit from the fact of what was in front of him, mm -hmm. but it was his first race on his, on the turf and it was his first race going to turn. So I think that he can step forward. Now maybe he has an idea of what he's supposed to do. Yeah, exactly. She, she very well could step forward she here, but um, looking at the pedigree too, I wasn't sold on the turf mm -hmm. pedigree. The, on the bottom side, even the mare was over three on the turf. So I do respect her and I will use her, but I was intrigued by a first time starter in here, the number three on board for trainer Todd. 
Todd Pletcher. And sometimes these are the murky races where you actually get a decent price on a Todd Pletcher yeah. first time starter. Um, this filly is by City Zip. I love City Zip sprinting on the turf or at least going this distance. And on the bottom side, the mare, she was 0 for 9 on the turf, mm -hmm. but she ran her best speed figures on the turf. She was second in the grade three Gallarette, so she's graded stakes placed on the turf, multiple stakes winner on the mm -hmm. dirt, and I like an inside post. I like that too. I think that there's quite a bit to like about on board, and you can never discredit a, a Todd Fletcher, let alone a first-time starter, but a horse that I think can move forward is the number five, Caffeine. Um, not just because I'm a coffee addict, but <laughs> because I think that this one... You and one, I both. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. But I think that this one, first of all, she just really needs a clean trip. Her last two races, both mm -hmm. of those in the barn of David Fox, since she moved over to his barn. She's been bumped around a bit, hasn't been able to get the cleanest trip. And two starts back, she, you see, she finished seventh, but she was only beaten by three and a half lengths that time. She was beaten as the favorite last time in Special Weight Company. That was going five furlongs. She's going to stretch out to the two turns today. Uh, she's a, a half to graded stakes winner, medal count, who was third in the 2014 Belmont as well. So I, I think that she's nicely bred. Um, there is turf pedigree there. Her last two turf races were that five furlongs. Maybe the stretch out will move her forward. I think the stretch out is going to move her forward, mm -hmm. completely throw out that race two back because yeah. that was horrendous. She was yeah. down on the inside <laughs> had absolutely no room to run throughout the entire stretch and last time out I thought she was unfortunately caught behind a wire-to-wire -wire winner who just kind of uh, kept on going mm -hmm. as you said it's kind of hard to make up ground especially with a horse that's loose on the lead on the turf at Gulfstream Park West so I agree with you caffeine is probably a must use in there as we get to the seventh race um, and to kick off the final pick four of the day we're going to the main track at seven furlongs for this maiden special weight and unfortunately some of the horses that um, make a lot of sense, like a first-time mm -hmm. starter for Mike Maker, like Pray for Bourbon, who's a heavy favorite in here, draw that way outside post mm -hmm. position. Sometimes it's not so bad, though, at this particular distance. No, that's true, because they will be coming out from the shoot in the seven furlongs, but that is a little bit of why I backed off of Pray for Bourbon. And uh, this one, I, I liked last last couple of races I think had some solid numbers certainly the most recent one I wasn't enamored with for Pray for Bourbon so I did land on the number five Sand Shark on top um, this one had a sloppy track in her debut for Todd Fletcher she still finished second so the question is if she can transfer that form to the fast track and that is a good question and also um, she is by hard spun you know she's got a little bit of nice off track pedigree um, I thought she ran well there was really no complaints I thought the winner got the jump on her my only concern was how she was bet she was not bet whatsoever for a Todd Pletcher first-time starter. Very cold going off at 8-1. to one. Um, But talking about Prey for Bourbon, who is the heavy favorite, uh, who, who should be the f heavy favorite mm -hmm. in here, I, I do think that she's just better going shorter. She cuts back from the mile. Mm -hmm. um, she's got a good foundation going against horses who sometimes are first-time starters or just lightly raced who are getting at a distance. And she's just been facing much, much better. Mm -hmm. Montreche, the winner of her last race, I believe is a nice Christophe Clement Billy who was well touted at mm -hmm. Saratoga. Um, we also saw Jameson and Ginger in there. She finished second in the Demoiselle. So just much better races, but I, she will have to work out a trip mm -hmm. from that outside. The one horse that you use, who I didn't, who I'm very scared of, <laughs> is the seven, Sip My Chardonnay, nay, <laughs> I yeah, believe is how you a tongue twister. <laughs> um, uh, it really well bet first time out. Very well bet. Um, I partly think it was the name, too, because been. going into that first race, I remember using that horse and liking the work tab. You like for, uh, Ralph Nix with first-time starters. I do think that the name and the connections, and it's, from all, it's all about the girls' stable, brought some of that money in. Uh, I thought she ran an okay race. She was wide. Maybe the blinkers will help her with focus. We talked about uh, Ralph Nix's first-time blinker starts yesterday, stats yesterday, excuse me. Not the strongest numbers there, but it was a good track that day. Maybe Maybe just she's able to get a little bit more focus with the addition of those blinkers. Uh, she's nicely bred, too. She could move forward. All right. Well, speaking of Ralph Nix, we'll turn our attention to the next race, I believe, is your top selection. Nine winners of two lifetime for 30000 a mile and a 16th on the turf course. And you land on the five lottery ticket trained by Ralph Nix. Trained by Ralph Nix. Now, there are some questions about her. She's 5-1 to one on the morning line, and she has not had a win on the turf in her nine starts. So I can, I can agree backing off of her because of 
that, and that was a question for me. But she's been running against tougher, and she's had some very nice performances on the turf in the money finishes or close to the winner finishes. But she's dropping from Allowance Company to the claiming tag, and I want to give a stat on just exactly that. And Ralph Nix, in the past five years, going from Allowance to claiming on the turf, not the biggest sample size, but I really liked these numbers in the ROI, 23% in the money, 55% 50, in the money, excuse me, 23% win, and 232 for the ROI. Okay, some good stats there for lottery ticket. I went to the two cavity, and not necessarily because of a hunch play, but I just thought this was a very <laughs> weird race last time out. Um, it, this horse, I thought in the past, has always been so much better when he's forwardly mm -hmm. placed, when he doesn't have so much to do, because he doesn't, not to say that he's one paced, but he doesn't have that really potent closing kick. Mm -hmm. um, and this horse was taken back early in a race that was eventually run pretty slowly, you know, up front. Um, um, so uh, it, it also looked like he was really struggling on the surface. He wasn't handling it, kind of swapping leads a lot. So I think he's going to be able to transition his form nicely back to a very firm course like uh, Gulfstream. He has experience on it before. And I think the key to him, and this is why I like him, because Paco is aboard, the aggressive gate mm -hmm. rider, hopefully he can get him a little bit closer in contention. Well, I agree. And I think that the pace the pace scenario in this race is a little bit suspect. There's, there's no real horse that jumps out at you and you say, oh, mm -hmm. that one's going to the front. Exactly. So uh, Paco Lopez, I think, will have cavity forwardly placed. And I agree that that is definitely where he does his best running. Now, the horse that's the morning line favorite is the six bingo kitten, who we're both trying to pick against. It hasn't really been the same horse since that big layoff. He, he hasn't been the same horse. And I know people will bet him off of the uh, competition that he's been facing, like revved up, like deeply undervalued. He came back to win a grade two, raised the bar, who was fourth in the Saranac. You know, there's some horses, uh, graded stakes quality horses that mm. he's been facing. That said, he's been doing zero running against them, and he's slow in a race that doesn't have a lot of pace. Right. So maybe one to um, look for some alternative options here as we get to the ninth race, the first half of the late daily double, our feature race of the day, two other than allowance going three quarters onto the main track. And we'll show you two replays. We'll start with the three. Uh, Mr. Baker, who should be your favorite in here, fresh off of a very impressive victory last time out at Gulfstream Park West. And this horse kind of sprung out of the gate, and although very quick fractions that day, he was never pressured. Um, is and, and it was a, a smaller field, Acacia. He faced mm -hmm. four others in that race. Today he's going to have to face a slightly bigger group, seven others today. Will he be able to dictate if he, and if he does, is he your clear winner? Well, he, there's some other speed in here. I don't think he's going to be al completely alone on the front end like he was there. He was also dropping from stakes competition to this optional claiming level. He tried to groom stick two back here at Gulfstream Park, and he has an excellent Gulfstream Park West record. I remember mm -hmm. talking to Edgar Zayas, his jockey, right after that race, and he said he likes the track, and it's the drop from stakes competition. So we both actually picked against him with the eight, your dreams are mine, who um, has had a little bit of trouble getting to the winner's circle in his last two, but they've been very good finishes. They have been. We'll go back to his race when he did go seven furlongs, two starts back against Tuff. Uh, allowance Company here locally uh, when we're all set did was victorious that day, and I think he may... This is a horse who... This race kind of worries me, <laughs> actually, because he had everything go his way. He had a nice pace in front of him. He had a perfect ride by Tyler Gaffleone, and he could not seal the deal despite closing from the outside. Mm -hmm. So that is a concern. That said, it does look like if anybody goes with Mr. Baker, um, he's going to get that set up once mm -hmm. again. And I think he can go three quarters. He just needs a setup. He might be a little bit better at seven furlongs, mm -hmm. but he can win at six furlongs. He can. He has before, and he's had some good in the money uh, finishes. And I, I do want to give a trainer stat on Milton Wolfson in the past five years with horses going route to sprint. This one tried actually a mile last time and finished second as well. Route to sprint on the dirt. Six for 23, 26% win, 57% of the time in the money, and a $3 ROI. So, again, not the biggest sample size, but he has had success with this kind of move in the past. Of course, and then uh, talking about pace in here, you know, the sun wind might be able to uh, keep the mm -hmm. pace a little bit honest. I know one of the horses who figured to show some speed, the four something awesome is out, but definitely Cat Tree. That has been his MO in the past. He's a very fast horse. He was a fast horse as a two-year-old, so I expect him to show a similar type of speed coming off that layoff as well. As we get to the nightcap, 10, race 10 here for this maiden $25,000 event, seven and 
a half furlongs here onto the turf. And, uh, you know, we're looking at uh, this race, and you landed on the eight graces drama. I know you're a little bit uh, bitter on the 10 Parker <laughs> Elizabeth, but we'll go back and take a look at this uh, Phillies replay uh, last time out when she finished second. And she was a short price that day. She's been heavily bet in her last three starts. And maybe today is probably the last day to give her a chance. <laughs> I thought this race, there was kind of some awkward action. Um, she's coming around the turn. She uh, almost kind of hits the hedge in a way. Mm -hmm. She kind of stutter steps just before the quarter pole. I mean, she might have hit the hedge. I don't know exactly what it was. You can't really see it from the camera angle. But then she followed up the stretch run without showing the ability to switch her leads, which I kind of did not like. So I think that's the key for her um, in in her success. Well, it might be. And you mentioned I'm a little bit bitter on her. I did uh, try and get her home in her past couple of starts. So now that I've jumped off, maybe this is the day that she's going <laughs> to win. Because works. that always does seem to happen. I agree. I would have liked to see a stronger finish than in, in the stretch there. And that is a bit of a quirky track, especially when the horses are running up against the hedge there. A couple starts back when she was drawn out side like she is today. She finished uh, just a neck behind the winner, Deputy Dora, who was a pretty good runner here going in her first turf start. So she's able to recapture some of that form, I can understand. But I did land on Grace's drama, as you said. And and she's not going to be um, a complete lock for me either. I don't like how she lost the lead last time in her most recent race. And um, she did manage to finish second. It was a distant second at that. But that was her first time. Um, that was, excuse me, going two turns again after trying sprinting on the grass and dropping to this 25 level. I I'm just hoping that she's able to maintain that kind of lead once she gets it. That was the question. I was on the fence because is she a two-turn horse or is she a closing mm -hmm. sprinter? I guess today we'll definitely find out. She's going to have to use a little bit of that speed from that outside post going this distance to um, a, a tough race, I thought, mm -hmm. to round things up. I think you have to use uh, maybe several in the final leg of the sequence. I also wanted to quickly mention the seven wild Dalton here who showed speed. She lost so much She's very quirky, so I and she kind of draws mid-pack here. I don't know how things are going to shake out here, <laughs> but going into the first turn last time out, she lost so much ground, and then once again, coming into the final turn, uh, she bolted. So I don't think her last race is really one to hold against her. I'm probably going to check for maybe some interesting equipment, maybe mm -hmm. a run-out blinker or uh, changes in, in a bit in a bridle bit mm -hmm. type of situation. But if she can maintain a straight path, maybe she's one to look out for for a big price. Absolutely, and keep an eye on the board and see if she is going to be cool on the board. She's 15 to 1 on the morning line, so if you get a price in her, this ra this last race in the maiden claiming is anybody's game. All right, we have 10 races on tap. We got through it pretty nicely. We have two carryovers, both in the uh, Super High Five that starts in race one and in the Rainbow Six starts later on today's card. Thank you for joining us here on Golfstream today, and best of luck on all your wagers. What do I love about horse racing? 